Okay. Cool. Good morning, ladies. I'm Rachel Henderson, the co-president of our wonderful Little Mountain Women in Business group. Um, besides Michelle, I don't see any newcomers today, so I won't go through the whole background of everything. But um, let's start with our 30 second introductions and then we'll let our wonderful guest speaker, Michelle, have the floor this morning. Um, I'm the owner and operator artist of Rachel's Creations. I do murals, face painting, canvas painting parties, body painting, pregnancy belly painting, any kind of fun artsy projects that people might throw my way. I've even done some shadow boxes and things like that for fun clients. And I'm also a house and pet sitter. I've done that for over almost 40 years now. <laughs> and I work part-time at Mac Nation Cafe. And Pat, let's go to you because you're the top left of my screen. Okay, Pat Fredrickson, Smarter Women Colorado and Vice President of Mountain Women. Um, I'm your email person. So if you need to get anything into the emails, please send it to mountainwomeninbusiness at gmail.com. And I will try, especially if you put it in the subject line. Um, what I do is help you with your finances and create your future income for retirement. I'm here to help you and there is no charge for this. So please ask me any questions or if you have Medicare questions for your parents, um, even though they're not in state, I'm only licensed in Colorado, I can help you out of state with any questions. Um, Audra? Yes, hi, good morning, ladies. Uh, I've missed you, I've been kind of out of the loop for the last uh, couple meetings, so it's glad to be back and see all your faces. Um, I am a residential mortgage lender with Caliber Home Loans and a renovation specialist, and that's actually what I wanted to just touch on briefly today, uh, with inventories obviously being so tight out there and multiple offer situations and the properties maybe not being in the best of shape because the sellers can sell them in any condition that they're at. If you have anybody that is interested in purchasing a fixer upper, whether they intend to live in the property, maybe buy it as a vacation home for their family or an investment property, and it needs a little bit of work, we can do a renovation loan and roll the cost of those repairs right into the loan. So um, it's a great solution for people instead of extending credit um, or borrowing money from mom and dad, <laughs> those types of things. So if you know anybody in that situation, uh, please keep me in mind. Thank you. Awesome. Miss Jill? Hi, Jill Wright. I'm a content and copywriter. I do web pages, uh, social media, blog posts, articles. Um, need anything online? Let me know. I'm, my website is jillwho.com if you want to look me up. And I have a hobby site that I have uh, from, oh boy, 15 years ago called woolcrafting.com if you want to check that out it's all about crochet and felting thanks wonderful as we go along ladies if you want to add your information in the chat feel free to jill was buffering a little bit there i think we got most of that but if you can add it in the chat too that'd be great miss karen yes good morning i'm karen miller ksm designs i design one-of-a-kind jewelry uh i'm in three stores at this point and uh, i'm at the colorado furniture store up in conifer uh a Bigata, and also in conifer and also in uh, belmar in the um, little tenary lakewood area and I uh, repurpose, refurbish, and uh, re, um, redesign things for you. If you have something for your mom, and, from your mom or your grandmother, and it's something that um, you like, but you don't want to give it away or throw it away, and you want to redesign it so you can wear it yourself, then you give me a call, and we'll sit down and over a cup of coffee, and we'll design it together. But uh, I also do uh, pearls, and uh, knot them and stuff, and whatever and with mother's day coming if you're lucky enough to have your mom if i can help you with a gift let me know but uh, karen miller from ksm designs thanks karen um miss katie morning um katie burgoyne my husband and i own denver amramp we do home and business accessibility 
Um, we also do events. Uh, Coming up next month is graduation. So we currently have like six ramps that are installs and takedowns all within a week. So it's kind of our crazy month. Um, and I also sell Rodan and Fields. I'm not, I won't spam you or anything. Audra will tell you if you need anything, just let me know. And that's it, homeschool. Um, oh, real quick, if anyone is interested in elevation celebration of having a booth at elevation celebration shoot me a message and let me send you over the information i'm on the board with the conifer chamber so trying to get people to be part of that this summer that's all and real quick mountain women in business will have a booth there as well if you want to be part of our booth you're allowed to sign up for a time slot and discuss and promote our group as well as yourself and your business while you're in the booth. And Ms. And Rebecca is, whoops, sorry. It's so, oh no, I was gonna say, I've, I've done that before and I think it's so great that our group does that and lets people, because two days can be a lot for people to be out there with the booth. So it's nice to have that little chunk of time to talk about your business and, and meet, see what it's about, you know? Yeah. Rebecca? Hi, I'm Rebecca Parent with Parent Technology Solutions. I uh, do curriculum design and learning systems, uh, particularly specializing in online learning. And I have a new position that I am currently doing where I am now the director of the first Lego League robotics tournaments for the state of Colorado starting this season. So if you've got technology and you want a solution that's Give me a ring. <laughs> Did you say Lego robotics? Yeah, they are Lego based, but they have a, a smart brick in them that has a storage capacity. And so they learn how to program and code and build and engineer and compete in tournaments. Like high school kids? It's the first Lego league is upper elementary through middle school. And then once they're above that, they go on to higher level robotics. So they have a whole tiering of keeping them moving into bigger and bigger robots. Oh, how cool is that? It reminds me I'll of- I'll let you know when we have the first event so you can come take a look. It's a it's a <laughs> pick to watch. <laughs> that would be so fun. We it would, reminds we me of- love a, that. A, yeah. Oops, sorry, Katie, what? Oh, I just said we would love that. Yeah. It reminds me of a funny episode of- Big Bang Theory way yeah, back when. <laughs> Thank you. Laura? Hi, guys. I'm Laura Bean. I am the owner of B Digital Marketing. I help small business women with email marketing, social media marketing, and website design. My specialty is WordPress website design. And I am really excited to be a part of this group. And I've already met Jill for coffee. And I have a a meeting with Pat earlier or later this week. So I'm really excited to get to know all of you guys. Yay. Lisa. Hey everyone, I'm Lisa Hempstreet. I help people with their family photos and videos, saving them, organizing them and sharing them with family and friends. As you heard, I do digitizing. So if you need that, that's something that is um, fun and meaningful to get those videos back into your life. The other thing I offer is a one digital home so that everything is in one place. One thing Rachel and I have talked about is having a hard drive and, and a phone that's full and, and maybe some memory cards and all of that and scattered on all these different places. And we get them all in one digital home so that you can manage them, organize them and share them. And then um, share them with, the, allow your kids and your extended family to have access to these images. And then I also have printing. So it, mother, it's not too late to get a special gift for Mother's Day. If you have a mom, a sister, an aunt, a neighbor, just someone you look up to that you admire and want to acknowledge for Mother's Day, let me know. We can get that done in the next week to 10 days. And graduation, like Katie said, graduation's coming. So if you have a graduate, high school, college, middle school, and you're having a celebration, we could do some special photo um, items that will, you know, celebrate that graduate. So I'll put my information in the chat. Wonderful. Alicia. 
Good morning, Alicia Sexton, REMAX Alliance in Evergreen and Conifer. I apologize, I'm in Vail right now for our state meeting, so I basically popped on to say hi because I haven't seen any of you for a while. So I'm going to have to jump off here in about 10 minutes so I can go down to our daily three days of meetings. But um, as Audra said, the market's great. Oh my God. What it, <laughs> it, it's a little bit challenging right now, but you know, we're getting it done and we're getting buyers and sellers bought and sold and just moving on. So I hope you guys are well. Thank you. Good luck with your meetings. Thanks. <laughs> and then um, I'll just go ahead and give the floor, if we can, to Michelle. She's going to teach us some fun things, I believe, about Google today. And Deb Evans, our other co-president, arranged with her to come speak and teach us some new things. Up the uh, so I can see everybody. Um, I have a couple of questions I want to start off with because it's always nice to have people um, share their thoughts as I go along. Uh, can everybody can your hear me? Can your volume go up just a little bit, Michelle? At all? I'm sorry. The volume. Okay. Um, Can you hear me now? Much better. Okay, cool, awesome. Okay, so um, uh, Rachel, if you could actually tell me, um, cause I can't see everybody, if you can tell me um, how many people's like hands get raised, cause I'm actually gonna ask a couple of questions. Um, first question is, is how many of you have ever worked for a fast food restaurant? And, like just kind of raise your hand. Okay, um, how many of you have ever worked for a grocery store? Okay, cool. Um, so never worked for a fast food restaurant, but I have worked in a grocery store in several different capacities as a checker in behind the seafood counter when I was in high school. So when you think of these types of service-based businesses, do you ever think about their systems? When you hear the word system, what most people think of is a factory or assembly line in terms of a business. Systemization is the act of planning a system for something or organizing something into a system. When it comes to the business world, there are lots of positive things that can happen when you use systems in your business. In this presentation, I'm going to share some compelling reasons why having systems in your business matters, some of the benefits that get overlooked and some steps that you can take today to get started in building a system for your business. My name is Michelle Guerra and I'm a business operations designer with the heart of a teacher. I help service-based solopreneurs like yourself master the Google Workspace platform, produce highly efficient business operations and overcome common productivity challenges. I'm bringing my 20 plus years of experience and expertise of working in the corporate world to small businesses and entrepreneurs by helping them better understand the power of building systems with their technology investments. All right, enough about me. Let's get started on today's topic. So I have to ask you a question. Why should you consider systematizing the things you do in your business? Maybe the thought of building systems in your business might be at the bottom of your to-do list or possibly the furthest thing from your mind. I get that. However, this is one of the biggest reasons why most small businesses fail. Having too many customers and feeling overwhelmed or they're unable to serve their current customers effectively, uh, causing an extreme feeling of burnout. Let me start with painting the picture of what it's like not to have systems in your business. When I first bought my home, I used to to maintain my lawn, but after my career took off and my time became limited, it was time to hire a lawn service. Of course, the first people I think of asking for a referral are my neighbors because they already are using a lawn service. I figured this would be an easy win-win situation since they were right next door to me. 
All the lawn service would have to do is extend their service to the house next door. Seems so simple, right? Boy, was I wrong. After hiring several different lawn services based on my neighbor's recommendation, they were maybe not really lawn services. They were mainly individuals that had a truck and lawn equipment and they call themselves a lawn service. I soon realized that it was more of a painful effort to deal with a lawn service person than doing the work myself. Here's the deal. Most of these business owners or entrepreneurs as they call themselves have no systems in place in their business. By not having any systems in their business, it causes lots of havoc for their customers. Well, at least from my perspective. Some of these pain points would include having extremely poor communication habits. Typically you are doing the chasing to get their attention or anything that you needed assistance with. You primarily had just a phone number and getting any sort of reply, callback or whatever was really sparse. You can forget about having a consistent schedule for your service. They didn't have any scheduling methods. That's right. If they didn't feel up to driving out to your house and doing the lawn, they would just decide not to come. No notice or heads up. When it came time to pay for the service, they didn't have consistent payment methods either. There was no self-pay or invoice for you to submit your payment. They would just show up at your door unannounced and ask for cash usually when they decided to come and perform the lawn services you were expecting over a week ago. These individuals are living off of the idea that they don't care about providing you customer service because no one enforces their bad behavior. That's right. My neighbors actually put up with this bad behavior for years. They had grown to accept the behavior as the norm. The only value this systemless business owner was providing is a low cost. However, you will have to do the work such as keeping up with the lawn service schedule or lack thereof to maintain the lawn that you want. So let's, let's now talk about the flip side of building and having systems in your business. Now, of course, my story as a homeowner does have a happier ending. When it comes to hiring that lawn service I needed, I did my research and found a lawn service company that fits my needs. The lawn service that I found provided a website with a phone number or request form to capture my request for service. That request form was also available to use for any questions or concerns I may have. They provided a published annual schedule for their lawn services and also provided their holidays when the office was closed. Anytime there were weather delays in the services, they would be sure to send out communications to all customers, letting us know of a delay in service and when to expect our services to be performed, which is perfectly understandable when missing a scheduled date. And last, but certainly not least, I was provided a monthly scheduled billing that I could pay online, removing that spontaneous knock at the door, asking for cash or check or for services rendered. Even if this was a solopreneur that did all of these things, I would have hired them on the spot. But the reality is most soloists really don't take time to invest in building these types of systems. Now this magic is not just for lawn service businesses. Any type of service-based business can create these systems. Systematizing a business, which is the act of putting things into a system, by following a defined method of procedure. That defined method of procedure is your step-by-step -step instructions that you use to follow in your business. Like the lawn service that had systems in their business, when a request was submitted from the customer or prospect, the business was able to take action quickly based on the type of question or request that came in. This was a simple system that was created based on the customer they served and how they wanted to respond to those requests. Even if this was a solopreneur business, setting up a simple system to capture what you need to know before you meet with a potential client or a current client that needs your assistance can save you lots of time. 
all right, maybe I got a spark of interest from you as I was telling my story. And of course, you probably can relate to the pain I was dealing with when it comes to a lawn service. Besides this creating a better experience for the customers, and I'll talk more about that later in this presentation, this also creates a better way for the business to handle the workload. There are five benefits that you get when you create these simple systems within your business. Benefit number one is it removes the chaos that is caused either with your customers or internally for yourself. You'll be working with a proven system that you know works because you created it with your customers' needs in mind. Not to mention it stops the uncertainty of handling any and all business matters. Things are done with purpose and with integrity. Benefit number two is it reduces the risk of loss, not only with the customers, but any of the invalu in invaluable intellectual property that you own, such as your customer's database, digital documents, or even financial records that could make or break your business. Benefit number three is having systems will promote standards, such as standards for using your technology, standard operating procedures, and reducing errors and admissions. This is all, can also promote clarity and expectations from your customers, leaving no gray areas in your business. Benefit number four is it also creates an accountable culture, not only with a team you may employ, but also with your customers. Customers like the structure presented to them, helps them know what they are required to provide when working with you, Processes are followed easily, making fewer mistakes that occur and keeping you more productive. And lastly, it creates an unforgettable experience with your customers. Even though I struggled to find the right lawn service, once I did, all those feelings of doubt, putting up with bad behavior, and considerations for doing the work myself were a thing of the past. It was as though a weight was lifted off my shoulders. I felt more at ease knowing what to expect and having the confidence in a business that would be taking care of my lawn. The value that is generated from your customers' emotions is balanced out by all of the systems that you implement in your business. You'll be able to provide the best customer service for all of your customers the same way. I can't say you'll never have to apologize to a customer for um, something that went wrong, but once you have your proven systems in place, it will be a rare occurrence. Now that you've heard what success would look like and all the great benefits that you get when you have systems in your business, how does someone get started? As a solopreneur, you want to project professionalism. As for um, your business, this includes your appearance and what you wear, how you show up in a timely manner, and your confidence in what you know as it relates to your service offerings. Although this can be defined as a physical appearance, it also defines your online presence too. Technology today has made it so easy for small businesses to accomplish projecting professionalism. It doesn't cost much. These are three areas that you as a business owner should invest your time and money into. The first is a professional email address. This will give you the appearance that you are a professional. Using your Yahoo, Hotmail, or even your personal Gmail account can be considered the same as showing up for work in your lounging attire. This also shows that you are open for business and are serious about being in business. You can accomplish this by getting a Google Workspace business account. For the same cost of a lunch out with a friend, you can have a professional email account. Next, you'll need to have to organize, have an organized office so that you can show up in a timely manner as a professional. When you define your work environment different from your personal environment, it makes a distinction between revenue generating activities and managing hobbies you enjoy. And lastly, 
creating your time-saving systems so that your competence as a expert promote you as a professional. Just like the lawn service I hired had a request form for prospects or current clients, the form was able to capture specific information so that they could easily respond better and faster to anyone that filled it out. That request form gave them the clarity so that they didn't have to juggle multiple things such as phone calls, emails, and even social media all throughout their day, allowing them the freedom to focus on doing the work they love. These three areas are the behind the scenes activities that your clients don't see, much like a repair in your house that is behind the walls that you can't see, but gives you peace of mind. What your clients wanna see is you providing the service and or results they paid you for. You're providing them extreme value through experience they received when working with you. The truth is every big business was once a small business navigating the small challenges you're facing now. The difference in their growth and sustained success as are the systems, business operations, and best practices they've applied over the years to be more efficient and better connected with their ideal customers. But here's the secret, you can do it too, right now. And it won't take an expensive budget, complicated resource, uh, or tons of time. Wanna make your small business feel big? I can show you how. My passion is helping service-based businesses like yours achieve their goals of creating a professional appearance and building systems for their business with technology. There are three ways you can get plugged in with me. If you don't have a professional email account with Google Workspace, you can either follow my free step-by-step -step guide to do it yourself or hire me to set it up for you. If you are serious about running your business and appearing as an expert, the next step is to get your Google business account now. Once you've got your, your professional email account, you'll need to organize your office on Google Workspace. Using my free handy quick start guide, you'll be able to set up your email, calendar, and file storage, and much more. You can also join my System Bytes email list, and I'll talk about this a little later, where you'll receive emails with ideas, concepts, workflows, systems, and all kinds of strategies with technology that a small business using Google Workspace can benefit from using. It's free to join and you can get access to all the previous emails that were uh, previously sent. Some of my list members tell me that I'm bringing more of the humanized approach with my email list for those using the Google business platform and giving direction on what business owners could be using to solve issues with their own productivity, which brings me to my last service I offer, which is you'll need to build those time-saving systems which can be difficult for you to do by yourself. You can join my system integrators guided virtual community of like-minded business owners who wanna get the most out of systematizing their business. Get step-by-step -step instructions, guidance, and ongoing support in a judgment-free collaborative environment that meets you where you are. Live sessions happen twice a month and membership includes a dedicated Google space for connecting between sessions. Well, that's all I have for you today. I hope that you have enjoyed learning some compelling reasons why systems are beneficial and how you can inject systems into your business. It's important to note that you are, if you are expecting the best customer experience from a business, why not provide that through your own business? I'm always open for questions or connecting to learn more about you and your business. You can scan the QR code and it'll take you to my contact me page where you can either schedule a 15 minute phone call or to find out if we are a good fit to work together. Or if you're really not committed to a phone call, you can fill out a form and let me know how I can help you today. Thank you so much, Michelle. That was wonderful. Um, Pat, how do we get back to the regular screen where we can just see everybody? Ah, there we are. Awesome. Does anybody have um, questions for Michelle? 
Hi, it's Rebecca. Rebecca sure. um, so I use a lot of Google. I have done Google education. I've done Google. I've got probably five Gmail addresses. Um, tell us a little bit more about how this Google workspace, is it a Google business license? Is it significantly different from the personal Google accounts? Absolutely. Um, it uses your domain. So if, if you had abccompany.com, you would have an email address that would be your name at abccompany.com. Um, my uh, domain is my full name of michellegarra.com. So I have an email address that is michelle at michellegarra.com. That makes a lot of sense. And it's probably something I should look into more too. I've been lazy to where I don't want five different email accounts. So once I know people and I know clients, I just give them my regular personal email because I know they're not going to spam me with business stuff. I use it all as the same account. And my personal email is Mountain Chick 67. It has nothing to do with Rachel's creations, but I do have a website and a Facebook page and all of those other separate things for my business. And it's interesting that you say that maybe it doesn't look quite as professional as it could. And the other thing that really struck me that you were talking about was appearance. And I'm dealing with that right now. I had a contractor all lined up to restain paint and do some minor woodworking around my house this spring. And he gave me an estimate last fall. He was a, a friend of another widow friend of mine. So I trusted him. We had a contract, but it wasn't signed and dated and he couldn't fit me in before winter. So now that he's decided to pull the bait and me and raise the prices, even if I asked him at the time, would this still be valid for the spring? And so I basically told him to take a hike and I'm having to have contractors out again. One, you know, answered an ad of mine on next door and showed up schlumpy, you know, told me he doesn't do written contracts. You know, his clients just trust him. And if you, if you don't like the work, it's free. You know, all of the, I'm like, no, 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 no. And then here comes the professional company who's probably going to have a higher bid, but gave me a binder with their information, with their insurance, with questions, with preferences. And, and just the appearance really does make a difference or having someone willing to put things in writing and make it professional. So I'm hoping for the best. We'll see what happens in the next couple of weeks. But all those things really do make a difference. And that's not even the computer part. That's just having a business card, having, right. you know, and legitimate never, information that someone's going to want to see to do business with you. Never work with a contractor that's not insured. Oh, I know. Ever. Yep. It, it makes me crazy. All the people on the community pages that are just will hire Joe Schmo down the street. That's not insured. And it's like, and contractors bids are never good over 30 days. Like, well, and he never told yeah. me that he it's, told me, yes, just, this, yeah. he would honor this. That's dumb but, on yeah. his part because I mean, my prices go up every two weeks not my prices, but like from my, just my shipping and stuff, you know, so they can't, that's not smart I on his part. I had a contractor once that gave us all the proper paperwork, uh, but he had, he was, had stolen his old boss's numbers and was oh, using wow. them to use for his business. And we, unfortunately, it was ignorance on our part, did not double check that the license was in his name. If we mm. had, we would have found out that it was in someone else's name. And it was an ugly, ugly lawsuit. So uh, luckily I had not given this guy any money yet. I had offered him a deposit. Luckily he, he didn't take it. He said, oh, I trust you. You know, I should have done the same with him though. But anyway, I didn't get screwed out of any money, but time and excitement over treating myself to this. Well, here's, here's the deal. Refresh this spring. So this, this whole thing that you're, you're going through if you feel a gut wrenching feeling oh, that yeah. you, there's no clear process that this person has, they're probably just 
willy nilly, um, you know, trying to get it out there, just like the, the lawn service that really all they had was just lawn equipment and a truck. And right. really, uh, you know, if you really want to work with somebody, yes, you are going to have to pay a little higher price, but you're getting the value that you want. Um, mm-hmm. you, you want to, you want to pay a nice price for someone to do the work, <laughs> mm-hmm. but you want to make sure it was- that it's, it's easy. Yeah, it was, you know, it was fair. It was in between some other bids. My friend had used him to remodel her bathroom. You know, he has his contractor's license. He had insurance. I thought it was legit. And I think what happened is he's got bigger and better fish to fry and better, you know, larger jobs that have come along. So my dink little thousand square foot house isn't important enough. And that's really sad. So Rebecca, you had actually asked a little bit more about the, um, the difference between the, the personal and a business account and the business. Um, And I also wanted to throw out there that like we've purchased a domain of my logo parent tax ass, and we're in the process of building it. mm -hmm. Um, so I know that purchasing a domain, anybody, so any contractor out there in the world could just go purchase a domain for like 25 bucks. So that doesn't really speak to their legitimacy. Um, so some of information about that, but also technically Google has restrictions on how many emails you can take in, um, how many ter- gigabytes, terabytes of storage you have, et cetera, and other features. So I wanted to see if the Google workspace gives me additional features. Yes. So additional features would include um, number one, a big one is that you can back up your entire platform, meaning your email, your calendar, your Google groups, if you use them, um, even your drive. Um, the one thing that I buy is the um, business standard, not the basic, but the business standard, which is the middle one. Um, I believe it costs $12 a month. Um, I get, uh, I think it's two terabytes of space but I use what they call shared drives, which is like having a network drive that you can actually partition off for, let's say you work with a lot of clients. If you work with clients, you can make your own personal shared drive that you share with just them. Um, and you can rip off the uh, permissions off of there. So if they, if they put files in there, you, you now own them. Um, and you can back them up for them so that you are keeping yourself from um, having that sort of uh, being sued for neglect, <laughs> like files getting lost or stolen or something. Um, I myself have a personal Gmail account, but it is literally used for personal things. Um, if it's business, I it's all business. I always send my business account. Um, but again, it's all tied with that account. So um, there is uh, another ingenious thing that they have is you have a marketplace for third-party apps that you can actually integrate onto their platform a lot easier than Office 365 um, that uh, that you don't really get with the personal account. There's certain things you can do with the personal account, but not so much with uh, the business. Your marketplace is open to a lot more things. That Um, sounds like what I'm looking for because I used to work with Google for education when I was working with some school systems and there were so many extra little applets that you could add that added so much functionality and they're not available in the the regular Google accounts because we uh, do a lot of a lot of delivery of programs virtually especially across COVID and the Google for education had a lot more functionality that I didn't have in my own account so this would make well, there's a couple of things that you get with the middle um which is the business standard one uh you can actually record your google meets um yeah. and they get saved on your platform um automatically and if you had a meeting with somebody mm-hmm. that you actually recorded it it automatically attaches it to the calendar invite so it's uh it's always there that's a, a bonus uh they just opened up a new feature called um Appointment scheduling. I'm sure a lot of you have heard of Calendly um, or have used some sort of tool that is similar to that. They are now adding that to the platform and you have to have Google Workspace in order to have, which is the business account, in order for you to be able to use that thing. Um, 
Again, my system bites uh, email list uh, would probably be beneficial for you because I open your eyes to a lot of different apps that are on the platform that a lot of people don't know about. Um, especially uh, in January, I talked all about Google Sites. Google Sites is their website. Uh, <coughs> bless you. <Go> ahead. <laughs> um, is, there, uh, is there an app for uh, making websites? My website is a completely Google site. Um, I don't have to pay for any hosting. Um, I'm able to, to run my, my um, <coughs> website without having to, um, to pay for third party you know, hosting of that nature. Um, they're always coming up with new and um, exciting pieces that you can add into that. So yeah, my, my uh, System Bytes email list is a Google group. It's using the platform itself. So it's, a, it's an email distribution list um, that goes out to people. Um, you might even wanna look into that for yourself. When, when you wanna look like a big company and when you wanna have more uh, email accounts, I still pay just one $12 a month per user account, but I have all these other email accounts that are utilized for different reasons, and I don't pay any extra for them. So it's kind of nice to be able to have uh, the ability to have multiple email accounts, um, especially if you have something on your website where you want to have like info at your company's uh, domain, where you want to just kind of collect um, people uh, emailing you and maybe spamming you. And then you can always just <laughs> not have that come to your inbox. It's going somewhere else. Um, so yeah. Michelle, you, you just mentioned $12 per user. That implies that they can do multi-user. Oh yeah. Yeah. You, so can you have, could have multiple people in your business all tied into that one suite. Yes. It is meant to scale. So yes. Yeah. Um, if okay. you had, you know, six people on your team, each of you can have your own email account and it'll be $12 per year. That's using the business standard one. Right. And then you have everybody in one centralized suite sharing your drive, sharing your system, sharing your logo, mm -hmm. and you have control over it. Absolutely. That That's significant. Yeah. Very cool. I love Google Drives. I use them all the time. I have You're gonna love even shared drives because it's like a step <laughs> a step above that. And you'll you'll also learn that there's third party apps that you can add in that can help you with uh, Google Drive to do extra things. Okay. My other problem lately that's been driving me crazy: I'm house and pet sitting elsewhere. Mm -hmm. So every time I go back to my house or run around, I'm old fashioned. I still have the paper calendar with the squares because I like to see it in front of me. Mm -hmm. So I have to tell people anytime I get a call, let me call you back as soon as I get home with my calendar, you know, so I can tell you if I'm booked that day or not. Well, and it works definitely... for me, but it might not sound as professional. And I've got an iPhone. I've got everything that should sync up together. And I'm well, just old fashioned and stubborn. You can also stubborn. use a, an appointment scheduler so that you, you have it connected to your calendar and then people can, they don't even have to call you. They can actually just find out what days you are available. See when and, I'm booked. And book it. Yeah. It, yeah. It's amazing how I never have to worry about that anymore. If somebody says, hey, when are you available? I'll just go to my website and pick a time. <laughs> mm -hmm. That way I don't have to go back and forth through email. I don't have to go and figure out, you know, while I'm on the phone, oh, wait, hold on a second. Let me look on my calendar. No, it's, it's all done for me. My, mine's a little trickier too, though, in that regard, because if I'm already booked, I also have a network of three or four other, say, face painters that I know and trust. We refer to each other. If one of us book, the other one can cover and we just take a little cut and we don't steal each other's clients. So there's no way to explain that. They would just see that I'm booked and I'm not, you know, I'm booked, but there's other well, then you would definitely use and possibilities to appointment scheduler that has for multiple users. Um, yeah. So it's, it's a, it would be an open call. So whatever, and, and having it on your website where you've embedded it on a page where somebody can just go and schedule and it doesn't matter who, who the person would be. It would just be picking a time and a day and then whoever is available, it would show up in there. 
So yes, an appointment scheduler sense. would definitely fit your, your needs for what you're trying to accomplish. Cool. And I'm thrilled I'm having these problems in 2020 instead of like 90 to 100 gigs, I had three. Now I need a clone. Ever since the beginning of April, the phone is finally ringing off the hook again and I'm thrilled, but I, I literally have two events that I'm having to send other cohorts to so we don't lose the business because I'm already booked. It's a good problem. Well, I, I always think of the appointment schedule as my employee. Mm, um, it's, it's taking, it's, it's like the receptionist. Do you remember the old receptionist sitting at the desk and answering the calls? It's like, they do it for me and I don't even have to worry about it. I just need to make sure that my calendar is up to date. So I never have to worry about that. Yeah, that's nice. This has all been so helpful. Does anyone else have other questions? And Michelle, we'll try to post. I think Deb already put a link to you on our Mountain Women in Business page, but we'll make sure and do that again so people know how to reach you. Jill, you had a question? Sorry? Yeah, I already have a website. Um, if I wanted to integrate the Google uh, scheduler, is that a, something that I could do? It's not hosted on Google, it's elsewhere. Um, yes, uh, you you can actually embed uh, the the scheduler or at least have a button that takes them to, a, to the appointment scheduler. Yes, but you have to have a business account in order to be able to get that uh, functionality. Okay, thanks. Yeah, that's, it's great that they're actually adding in more and more feature functions. Um, I, uh, I use tasks all the time and there's a third party app that I love using called task boards. It makes it look like Trello, but um, it's using all of Google's tasks. So I never have to go away from Google's tasks. It just has a sheet a, a web page for me to look at. So again, um, there's a lot more functionality that you get when you use a business account and when you're in business. So it's helpful. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll put a link inside of the chat for my website. Uh, I do have a page on there that is for professional emails if you want to get more information on that um, so that you can le either learn how to get one or how to easily just get started with one. I have a question, Michelle. Do you use Google Voice for your business too? I know it's kind of separate from the workspace. You have to pay extra for Yes, that. I do. I, yeah. uh, I actually had, before Google Voice was integrated with Google Workspace, I had actually gotten a free account with my business email. So yeah. I was on the, the legacy people, but uh, yes, I did finally um, add in that uh, functionality. So I pay, I think it's, it's 10 bucks a month for the um, business phone, and it's wonderful. Um, any, I always put that phone number in um, and it's actually within your Gmail. You can actually see the Google voice. It's so you can answer the phone wherever you are. Uh, I do use the app on my phone. And it really does segregate business and personal. So people don't, don't call me on my personal mobile number. And the great thing about what they did is you can actually put your business hours on there. And so it'll not ring during your non-business hours, uh, which is, I think, key for any business owner <laughs> to have a phone that shuts off uh, and goes straight to voicemail. Uh, if you ever get my voicemail, it'll tell you, it'll direct you where you can actually leave a message or where you can get um, connected with me um, so that it's super easy. Yes, Google Voice is now integrated. It is an extra charge, um, but you get support. <laughs> well, I have the free one. And like you, I signed up eons ago for the free phone number and that roots to my cell phone. Um, and I love it, you know, because I in text messages too, you can, it texts you in Google Voice. It's completely separate from your business or your personal one, which I don't even look at. <laughs> so, um, but I was wondering if, if the paid version is better, because um, I know that sometimes I have some issues with the free version, not always. So here's the, here's the, uh, the deal. If you have it tied to your Gmail account, you'll have to do a little bit of a process where you actually have to bring it back to a carrier 
and then bring it back to them. And I think it can take just uh, probably okay. 12 hours to, to make that all happen. Um, but yes, if you don't have it tied to your business account, it yeah. will have to go through the channel of porting it porting to it. the carrier and then porting it back. Or getting a new number. <laughs> or getting a new number. Putting my old number to the new one. Why not? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> or just have that phone number forwarded to the other one and That's then they don't even know. <laughs> All right. Michelle, you. are you local in Denver? I am not. I am in okay. Cyprus, Texas. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I, I've only been, yeah, I've only been uh, in Colorado, I think a couple of times I visited for Estes Park and uh, mm -hmm. I think I went to Denver and I have ridden the uh, electric train. That was, that was fabulous. I, I have actually visited, this was years ago though. So I, I probably need to come back to Colorado, but now I have a reason, right? <laughs> yeah, come visit us anytime. We'll meet with you in person. I have it family in Texas do. and my mom has a place. We have a place in Galveston still. So I'm down there usually once or twice a year. Oh yeah. Nice. Well, thank you so much. That was wonderful. Do you have a LinkedIn account? Can you put that in our chat also? Yes. And I we can all LinkedIn account. connect with you. There. Does anyone have any other questions? We have about five minutes left. I know one of the next events coming up is probably, let's see, our next in-person meeting will be Thursday the 5th. And then I know we're having our meeting um, May 21st at Josie's place at the meeting sanctuary. We're all gonna have lunch and socialize. It's gonna be from 11 to one. And then we'll have our next Zoom meeting on the 17th of May. And we'll post all of this on our Mountain Women in Business page. I don't think there are any other big public events coming up till summer, but if you, Pat's got something. Okay. Um, we are signed up for Elevation Celebration. So that'll be two days. Uh, we'd love to have you do two, four hours each day because um, quite a few of our people do have their own booths like Katie with AmRamp. Hopefully we can be next to you and maybe you can share our booth and use it also. Um, the other thing is we have not signed up for Bailey Day yet. And I'd like to, is there anybody here that is even interested? Because I'm not getting any interest. It is two days, the last full weekend in June. And... I don't want to end up setting up the tent and nobody's there. So sadly, there I'm probably going to be vacationing because that's the first time I have a chance for a break. And my 55th birthday is on the 4th, but I'm booked through the 13th. So probably the end of that month, I might be gone somewhere fun. Um, I don't know about everybody else. Maybe we'll do an email to the group and say, speak now or forever. Hold your <laughs> piece this year or get your own booth for that one and yeah, see how um, it how the response is ruth day also has one um you know and, Hi, and ladies. if somebody thank you uh oh, if, thank you so much to, to, she's gone if somebody okay. wants to zip in for an, a couple hours and we've only got one person we'll let you know ruth is offered to let us be in her booth but oh, um mm -hmm. Well, and her husband is also in there with his business. So not ideal, but I, I don't want to end up setting up this tent and then nobody's there either. But this is part of your dues that you do get to attend these events instead of spending a couple hundred dollars to have your own booth. Um, you get to come for free as a member. So please let me know. And there will be one in the fall. It is free, set up your own if you want, but it's the last weekend in September at Aspen Ridge Church. Oh, the church. It's right by the roundabout on Highway 73. So that's all I know of for the summer, we've decided not to do the Rhubarb Festival <laughs> down <laughs> in, um, uh, what, what's that little town? Um, Pine. Pine, 
Yeah. <laughs> Down in Pine, there's usually only a couple hundred people that go to it. So not quite worth our time on that one. Um, but if you are interested in getting your business into Park County, Bailey days are the ones to do it. And last year, that place was jammed. Yeah. It was even better than Elevation Celebration in Conifer. Um, I'm glad they're doing them on separate days now. Yeah, with the two days, <laughs> It might get spread out, but it's also well, year, they were on the same weekend. Yeah, this weekend. Yeah. yeah, it's not. There's nothing else going on. Whereas Elevation Celebration, you've got um, the pack mule races, and I think Evergreen is still doing their jazz festival, etc. So, let me know, and I will put out a something in an email on this because we need to decide soon if we're going to do this or not. Okay. I wanted to mention if anybody wants to come to just a fun gala fundraising event this Saturday, I volunteer for a, an Optimist Club down here in Denver. And we are having a fundraiser gala with a DJ and dancing and our projects support youth, uh, senior life care center, and particularly foster kids. So we do different projects where we handle building backpacks for kids that are just going into foster care. And then on the other extreme, we've got some foster kids that have just aged out of the system that we do different support projects for them. And um, so that's running this me? Saturday. So I can just send that, e that information. Yeah, I'll, I'll just do it, it in the, the email. And it's Saturday evening down in Lakewood, um, across from Casa Bonita, if you know where Casa Bonita oh, is. Funny. Okay. Um, other than that, I think that's about it. I am going to be jumping in at Mac Nation maybe the last Saturday of this month. We were going to do it this Saturday, but it's supposed to snow again. <laughs> um, on Saturdays when I'm not booked with other gigs, they're going to pay me a little bit to come add some free face painting for people to come hang oh. out at Mac Nation from 12 to 2 on some of the Saturdays. And my boss Alton just had her second little baby. She had her baby boy on Thursday and everybody's happy and healthy. So we're looking to, to see him, looking forward to seeing him and getting her back to work soon. We miss her. <laughs> Nothing else major, anybody else? Yep. No. Okay. We'll see you all in May and just holler if you have any questions. Okay. Thanks, ladies. Bye. Bye.